Jack, go into the house, lock all the doors. Whatever happens, don't come outside. You hear me? Whatever happens. Okay. Come here, son. Whatever happens, keep the doors locked and your mother inside. Promise me, son. Promise me. Who is it, Pa? It's just some old friends. Me and Uncle take care of it. And you go inside and you keep the doors and the windows locked. I hear you. Then run! Yeah, run, boy! Here are the final moments of John Marston. With his death, marks the end of an era. A time of men long gone, a kind of men the world doesn't want anymore. Nothing more than bandits, cold-blooded thieves, and murderers who care for no one else but themselves. The days leading up to John's demise were spent with him adapting fairly well to a domesticated life. He was finally left alone on his ranch, which he tried so hard to make work. Work was put into it, along with repairing his marriage and establishing his bond with his son Jack, only for John to be ambushed by the US military and a Pinkerton detective, Agent Ross, who, throughout the duration of this entire game, promised John clemency and a chance to live out the rest of his days with his wife and son if he brought in the remaining members of the Vanderland gang, old brothers in arms of his, that continued to breathe. A task John completed, albeit reluctantly. As it stands, the Red Dead Redemption series is one that seems to be meant for the moral question of, no matter how hard someone tries to make up for their sins, all the wrongdoings and terrible things that they committed in their lives will forever be stains on their characters and legacies. What they chose to do in their youth will never escape them. A world they rejected will soon pay them back the favor, equal to the passion and fervor they displayed in their youth, equal in blood payment and in vengeance. Today we're going to be talking about the deaths of John Marston and Arthur Morgan, two of the saddest deaths in video game history, although for different reasons. Both characters have different personalities, different way of dealing with things, and of course people, and they found themselves succumbing to different things. Arthur was killed slowly and agonizingly by tuberculosis, a disease that primarily affects the lungs. If left untreated, it eats the lungs from the inside out, slowly diminishing any kind of lung capacity and causing the chest to fill with blood. During the later events of Red Dead Redemption 2, when Arthur starts to look undeniably sick, you can see him coughing up blood, displaying the advanced stage of his tuberculosis. There are limits. So, let me be very... Are you okay, man? Someone. Jackson, take him away. Chief Reigns. That's, uh, Reigns' fault. Exactly. Chief Reigns, the thing it's quite is, a cough. The federal government... Sure. Wait here. I'll fetch you some water. I'll, I'll be fine. Arthur contracted his ailment while beating a terminally ill man to death that owed the gang money. Refusing to pardon the debt and after mercilessly beating Mr. Downs, Arthur threatens him in his face. It's at this time, Downs coughs in Arthur's face, sealing his fate. John, on the other hand, didn't have a death that we seen coming. While Arthur was spared no luxury in his swift death, watching his health slowly decline and with it the gang fall apart and how the remaining members of the Vanderland gang, most of all Dutch, all started to look at him as nothing more than a delusional liability, is heartbreaking and at times infuriating. He seemingly is more logical now more than ever before, yet because of his sickness and the unwillingness of others to side with what he's saying, he's dismissed as delusional and dying. Arthur's death is sad in his own personal downfall. It's never easy to see someone go from their top physical health, especially such as Arthur's, a person who's highly respected and even feared, to be a shell of their former self, no longer commanding the trust, the respect, the fear, or even basic ability to walk for a decent period of time. Arthur's descent is biblical, yet there's still some kind of silver lining with Arthur's death. Arthur spends the remainder of his days, arguably even his final moments, ensuring John, his younger brother whom he loved dearly, had a a chance to escape, to leave this life behind and have a realistic chance of living a normal life with his wife and son. A normal life that Arthur often was seen wanting to establish for himself with Mary Linton. Is it too late for us, Arthur? I can't lie to you. I'm a wanted man, Mary. If I... If anyone close to me, well, they wanted to, and I can't have you wrapped up in that, but it's coming to an end. This time it really is. Run away with me, Arthur. Run away right now and don't look back. I want to. More than anything, I want to. But I've got some people I need to take care of. Once they're free, then I'm free. Then I can disappear. But Arthur... If we're going to run away anywhere, we need money. Soon, I'll have some. 
I know you won't run away. Arthur died peacefully on a mountaintop. While some people say he was abandoned, left to die alone, that may be true, but at least he can rest easy knowing he gave all he had fighting for those he truly cared for in the end. Something John only had a moment's notice to attempt to do. Surprisingly, a decent group of people have still not played the original Red Dead Redemption, so spoiler alert, when that's way overdue, sorry about that, but John dies in the original Red Dead Redemption. In similar to how Red Dead Redemption 2 as you take over John after Arthur's death, in the first game, you play as Jack after John's death. And to bring everyone up to speed of the events of the original Red Dead Redemption game, you take control of John Marston, who's being forced by Agent Ross and the Pinkerton Detective Agency to go after Javier Escuela, Bill Williamson, and Dutch Vanderlyn, former gang members of his. John is forced to hunt these men down under threat of Abigail or Jack getting hurt by the Pinkertons who have them in their custody. In exchange for killing or capturing these men on behalf of the Pinkertons and the United States government, John has promised clemency and a chance to live out the rest of his days to die old with his wife Abigail by his side, and hopefully witnessing an adult Jack staying outside of John's previous life of crime and taking over what would now be a family ranch. We'll make it very clear he's no friends of the Pinkertons or the government and not really holding any loyalty to any side of the law. With John's main drive being to reunite with his wife and son, he carries out the job pretty effectively. Bill, Javier, and Dutch are all taken care of. Abigail and Jack is released back to the farm, and there's a decent amount of time where John can rekindle his relationship with both his wife and son. The game seemingly feels like it's hitting a low point and is about to have a nice wrap-up. By contrast, Arthur's final moments in Beaver Hollow, it's not just his sickness that's going on. That's not the only thing weighing heavy on everybody's minds. There's the issue of the overall state of the Vanderlyn gang. Individual members are leaving. Dutch's trust is shifting. Everything seemingly is splintering and splintering very rapidly in multiple directions. Then there's the question of how the Pinkertons, Cornwall's men, the U.S. Army's portion of the story, or that of the Wapiti Indians, is all going to conclude. Since the entire chapter of Beaver Hollow, Dutch has been exploring every and any option available to him to cause as much quote-unquote noise as possible. There's an epic climax that is looming on the horizon, and you just can't help but see how it's all going to explode in everybody's face. John's story is the opposite. There's no anticipation of a climax. There's no looming threat. You feel as if for a moment, John is actually going to escape. He managed to get out of his criminal lifestyle and earn a place in the civilized world he tried so hard in his youth to reject. We feel as if he's going to actually grow old and do the very thing none of the other Vanderlyn members was able to do, establish a life for themselves outside of crime. Arthur possibly succeeded in saving his brother. That is, until one day, with no warning, no provocation, no time to react, an entire US regiment descended on the Marston family ranch with one goal in mind to kill the sole remaining Vanderlyn member. John was tricked, used to deal with men just as dangerous as him. And once they were taken care of, it was now time the gun was turned on him. I think the majority of us are more familiar with Arthur's death, running up the mountain with John by his side, only to stop abruptly hunched over, gasping for air. Keep pushing, Arthur. No. <coughs> no. I think I've pushed all I can. Come on. You go. We ain't got time for this, not now. We ain't both gonna make it. Go. Now. I'll hold them off. It would mean a lot to me. Please. Arthur's death is sad for many reasons, at least his high honor death is, which I consider to be canon, I'm not entirely sure if it is, but for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna roll with it, because I find it most heartbreaking, and it seems as if the general consensus is Arthur being dishonorable, only to then flip his honor around once it's revealed to him how sick he truly is. But with Red Dead Redemption 2 being a much larger scale game, we spend way more time with Arthur, getting a deeper feel for who he really is deep down beneath the rough outlaw exterior everyone else witnesses, something we really don't get with John. Arthur has a death that humanizes the character, with his priorities and even loyalty technically changing from focusing on the entire gang's well-being and sticking by Dutch's side to then ensuring John makes it out of this life alive and settling anything else in his life that needs to be settled before his time comes. It's slow, it's painful. It's dragged out, yet it's one that displays the sense of urgency and fear people can experience when death is on their door and they aren't ready. The people they care for most aren't ready, 
they're still needed. John's death, on the other hand, was entirely unnecessary, and was just a cold-blooded act of killing an unsuspecting man who falsely believed he had been forgiven for his crimes. John was outright betrayed by Ross. If you rewatch the entire last mission, it's actually pretty heartbreaking. John seems to finally have a healthy conversation with Jack, something he hasn't been 100% successful with. Now in this moment, they finally seem to have a very nice bonding moment that is abruptly ended by Uncle calling John outside to see the mounting threat on the outskirts of his property. John then embraces Jack and tells him to keep his mother safe inside the house. Once the first wave of US soldiers are clear, John secures a horse for Abigail and Jack, tells them to hide, and not to worry about him. He'll catch up. I'll catch up. Keep riding and don't look back. And don't be worrying about me, you hear? Now get going. You stay out of trouble, John. Ain't no trouble, Abigail. Ain't no trouble. I love you. I love you. Now go! Get! <laughs> Just a few moments later, John is gunned down in front of his barn. While John struggles to gasp for air, Ross calmly lights a cigar and smokes it as he watches John slowly succumb to his gunshot wounds. Laying there, bleeding to death on the property he tried so hard to make a new life for himself, John dies, not even fully aware of whether his wife and son made it to safety. While the betrayal of Ross is sad in and of itself, it doesn't end there. This mission witnesses the death of Uncle, who dies on the porch of John's house. One of the deaths that's, I think, always overlooked because John's death is just so shocking as it is. Well, the real sadness, I think, comes from after John dies. Abigail and Jack decide to come back, where they find John laying in a pool of his own blood. With this being a game from 2010, it's not really as tear-jerking as the death of Arthur is, but if you just look at the circumstances and how everything plays out, Jack and Abigail now have to fend for themselves and bury their husband and father, whom just a few moments before was alive and well. Now, he was killed in one of the most brutal ways possible with no warning whatsoever. Arguably, both Arthur and John were punished for what they did and the lives they chose to live without thinking twice about who it affected. Yet that doesn't mean any of it is less heartbreaking. John's death for me was always shocking and frankly upsetting. It left me with the ultimate question of why. Arthur's death was heartbreaking and more so instilled the feeling of, what if I did things differently? Either way you look at it, both of them in their final days did what they could to make the best happen for the people they loved and cherished most. 